Hello, everyone. Welcome to Outlier. Oh, I am so excited. I hope you are too. Um, I want to just start out, uh, start the day by telling you a little bit about kind of the path to here, um, the vision and goals of Outlier. And, and then I'm going to kind of get into the logistics uh, for you to be aware of and ways in which you can interact with each other throughout the next few days. And then after that, we can get started. Okay, so I don't know if y'all know this, but Outlier has actually been a year in the making. Over a year, actually. I checked the Google Docs, and the first brainstorms for Outlier were from January of last year. Of course, back then, we were planning for a live event. Um, but even though the format has changed, the goals and the vision of Outlier have remained the same. So one of the goals of Outlier is the goals of most conferences. Um, it's to learn from others, right? To leave feeling inspired, uh, learning something new, being amazed by work other people are doing. We did our best to create a speaker lineup that showcases a diversity of topics and perspectives and has, I hope, a little something for everyone. We also wanted to create a space uh, where attendees could inspire others by allowing them to share their expertise and experience via a variety of formats. So in addition to the curated lineup, we want to create a space where everyone has the opportunity to have a voice. This is where the lightning talks and the unconference sessions come in. With lightning talks, many are able to share their experience and expertise through five minute talks. And the unconference portion will enable anyone in attendance to create a session. These sessions are created by and for the attendees. They are not curated ahead of time, but rather are made on the fly by people here who want to share or lead a discussion or activity. Another big goal is to create a space where people can make connections. One of the things I love the most about conferences is the ability to meet new people and make connections with people. At an in-person conference, these happen really easily through you know, chats with your neighbor between talks, um, those break time hallway conversations, evening outings and activities. Transitioning to the online uh, to an online conference brings with it the challenges of enabling these kind of connections without the benefits of being together in the same physical space. We tried to tackle this challenge by providing a variety of ways in which people can connect. Some of the ways people can connect at Outlier are through chatting on Slack and in the platform, meeting up in the lounge, taking part in the speed meeting networking sessions, and the one I'm most excited about uh, through the unconference sessions I mentioned before, through the discussions and hangouts uh, during these sessions, which enable attendees to congregate around a particular topic or activity and meet others in the data space with similar interests. So as we're, we were reaching for these goals, um, all the while we were keeping accessibility and inclusion at the heart of our planning decisions. One of the clear advantages of an online event is that since it removes the barriers of people needing to travel to one location, it is automatically more accessible and inclusive than an in-person equivalent. And it's able to draw a more diverse group of speakers and attendees. We've worked to create an environment that is accessible and then ensures everyone in attendance feels included. And we aim to reach a global audience and include speakers from around the world. I personally think we did a pretty good job on these goals. I hope you agree. And I'm really excited to get started. It's also worth mentioning that this conference is hosted by the Data Visualization Society. I am the events director of the Data Viz Society, which is why I worked on Outlier. The Data Visualization Society, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, strives to be a community, a place to foster constructive engagement on broad broader problems in the data viz field, a resource for data visualization practitioners, and an engine to push the maturation and professionalization of data visualization. It's currently free to become a member, so if you're not yet, I hope you'll join us. You'll also hear more from Amanda, our executive director, tomorrow. All right, let's get started, shall we? I'm going to get into more details about the conference itself. So Outlier spans three days, 
February 4th, 5th, and 7th. Some might be wondering why that day in between. Quite honestly, it's for sleep, uh, particularly for the folks running this thing. You see, each day at Outlier is around 21 hours long. The whole point of this is so that no matter where people are located, they're able to participate in live activities with other people during their waking hours. As someone who does not want to miss things, um, I'm going to be drinking a lot of caffeine and trying to be there for most of it. But you're not expected to. We will be recording and we will be sharing these recordings with attendees after the talks. Additionally, the whole schedule will go back and forth between curated talk portions and unconference portions. We'll have a few talks, an hour or two of unconference, rinse and repeat. And we'll talk about the unconference a little bit more in a bit. When you get into Hopin, the, the platform we're using, um, and you may already be here if you're watching this from the stage, hello, you will see this reception page. So we tried to link to everything you need here so that you can always find what you're looking for. For example, the attendee documentation. We've been trying to share this around uh, in newsletters and on Slack, but in case you haven't seen it, you can get it from the reception page. It's a good place to start when you're getting going, or if you have questions, it's a good first place to look. If you can't find it there, I'd next suggest the help channel in Slack uh, if you're in there, and if you're not, the join link is also on the reception page. And you can also flag questions in the events chat. All right, so I'd like to go over kind of the rules of engagement um, that are designed to ensure we all have a good time. The first is to mind the code of conduct. The Data Visualization Society is dedicated to providing a harassment-free experience for everyone. You can read our full code of conduct at the website shown. In the very simplest terms, don't do anything that's going to make us say that you're a jerk. Let's just not be jerks. That should be easy enough. <laughs> Another uh, rule of engagement is um, no pitching rule. So while we may have attendees who run their own businesses, are involved in startups, or hiring managers who are actively recruiting, Outlier is designated to be a safe space for attendees to come together, learn from one another, and share ideas without having to swat away pitches regularly. We designed this event as a way to engage with data visualization community. You're encouraged to reach uh, out to others during the conference, but not as a means of recruiting or sales, unless an attendee has clearly signaled their desire to be contacted or have reached out. There are also specific locations where this kind of thing is acceptable, such as the job postings or marketplace channels on Slack. So why do we have this rule? The events committee is striving to be transparent as possible, which includes ensuring participants are aware of when something is an advertisement or a pitch. And additionally, we want to maintain an inspiring and engaging space. We want to ensure the event is not cluttered with this kind of engagement. So don't force an attendee to need to say this. What you're selling, I ain't buying. <laughs> Additionally, with an online conference, it's sometimes harder to remember that we are not the only ones in the room, even if we physically are, like me right now. Nobody here. <laughs> it's much easier to talk uh, over people or cut one another off in a virtual setting, and most of the time, unintentionally. I encourage you to be aware um, if you're the main voice being heard in just heard in a, in a discussion, and be mindful of lifting up quieter voices. Additionally, not everyone likes their picture taken. So if you want to take a photo of a fun discussion room you're in, maybe give people a moment who you know don't want in the photo to turn off their screens. Um, try to ask permission before posting photos. These are the main things that I wanted to mention. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's you know more details in the code of conduct, uh, but really what it boils down to is uh, be mindful of others, um, try to be kind, and uh, yeah, let me know if you think there's anything missing from this. Okay, so what do you do if you see someone being a jerk? We have a process for that. It's a very simple form. It's also linked on the reception page, so it should be easily findable. You can submit anonymous, anonymously if you like. 
We will have uh, people on call throughout the event to handle issues. And once it's submitted, that on-call person will be notified. So at any moment during the conference, there will always be someone who is out, uh, who is, um, whose job it is to watch out for violation reports. Now, we hope their job is like super boring and uneventful and they have nothing to do with this job uh, and get to just watch uh, the conference the whole time because that would mean there's no violations happening, right? And you guys are great. So my hunch is that they won't be very busy. However, we do feel it's important to have this, this line open um, and uh, someone on call just in case an issue should arise so we can deal with it swiftly. Okay. Now more about the platform. Um, all curated talks will take place on the stage. You'll notice a chat space on the right. Uh, the tab labeled stage is for chats happening about stage content and will only be viewable here. The event tab uh, is for like a global event chat uh, that will, can be accessed throughout the platform. Speaking of the talks, we will have live transcriptions for all the curated content. So all the curated talks, including lightning talks and the Q&A. The link to this transcription window is on the reception page. In this window, uh, you're going to be able to change various formatting options to create the settings uh, that are best for you so that you can best see uh, the transcriptions as they come through. Unfortunately, Hopin did not have the ability to pass this straight into the video, but we are happy to provide this window option. And we'll also use these transcriptions to add accurate captions to the YouTube videos later. In the reception, you'll see a link to the Outlier uh, 2021 documents. In this folder, you'll see a document for each talk. Here, you can find information about the talk, the speaker, and a space to take notes. If the speaker already provided us with a transcript or slides, those will be linked uh, here as well. And we'll add links to the videos um, into these documents for folks that miss the talk live. Traditional note taking too boring for you? No worries, each talk will also have a mural board associated with it where you can toss in sticky notes, post pictures, draw, leave messages to the speakers and really whatever else you'd like to document during your talk experience. Uh, you could even just play around in there. Uh, these will be linked uh, to from the notes doc so you can find them there for each talk. All of the unconference sessions uh, will be uh, findable in the sessions area of Hopin. The sessions appear there when they are happening in the schedule. Therefore, when you go to the sessions tab, you won't necessarily see all the scheduled sessions. You will see sessions that are happening then. Um, each unconference session will appear uh, five minutes before their starting time. Once you join a session, you can either sit back, relax, and watch, or depending on the type of session, uh, you could request to share your audio and video and join the conversation. There's a lot of uh, cool sessions already planned. Some of the sessions already planned to happen later today are an Ask Me Anything uh, with Alberto Cairo, a paired data viz challenge, nonprofit meetup discussion, three questions with Shirley Wu and Nadi Bremer, visualizing data in Excel, a historic data viz show and tell, Data Monsters Collage Party, and an APAC plus Asian Snacks discussion and hang. And secret, I'm actually filming this a few days before the event. I'm speaking to you from the past. So there's going to be even more planned by the time you see this. So there's a few ways you can get involved in conversations. Uh, one, you could join the Slack. You can introduce yourselves in the introductions channel, peruse the other channels, and I'll say once again, if you're not in Slack, there's a join link on the reception page. One note is that anyone can create a channel. Uh, for example, I very quickly noticed that there were a bunch of people in the introductions channel who said that they were swing dancers and or other types of partner dancers. Um, and being a swing dancer myself, I was like, I want to connect to the other dancers. And so I created a partner dance channel and posted in general um, to let others know they could join and other dancers join and we've been chatting. Um, so if you create a channel, feel free to post that into general and let others know about it uh, so they can join the conversation. Some quick Slack guidelines that are good to keep in mind is try to utilize threading um, to keep conversations together. Try to post in the appropriate channels and use a lot of emojis. That is not a guideline, it's just fun. 
There are also ways to connect with people within Hopin. There is the event chat window. And additionally, you can search for attendees, reach out for a chat, or even request a meeting. We have a virtual lounge space powered by WonderMe. So want to take a break from the scheduled content? You could try popping in here. Another way to connect with people is through the networking tab. The networking area in Hopin is the place for automated one-on-one -on -one meetings, randomly pairing two people together over a direct video call. There are some times in the schedule direct, uh, dedicated to networking time, but you can hop in here literally any time. As long as someone else is in there, you'll get matched. As you experience all these aspects of the event, we would love to hear your feedback. Um, you know, whether it be constructive, maybe there's friction points or issues you're experiencing. It could be positive. It could be, I really like this thing. You should make sure to do this again next year or just general ideas of think, things that we could try the next time around. We wanna hear all of it. And your feedback is probably freshest as you're experiencing this event. So you can provide your thoughts anytime in this feedback form and feel free to submit as many times as you like. You can do this anonymously or not. The whole goal is to capture thoughts and ideas as you have them while you're experiencing them. Okay, um, we've gotten by a bunch of the logistics and now it's time to start thanking all the wonderful people involved. I wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to our sponsors. Our sponsors help to cover the cost of things like speaker honorariums, live transcriptions, tech platforms. Their support has also made it possible for us to offer the multi-tiered pay what you're able pricing, which greatly increased the accessibility of this event and which I'm really happy about. I also wanna shout out a huge thanks to the events committee. I don't know if I could tell you the amount of hours that went into this event. I honestly couldn't calculate. Um, anyways, these awesome people were instrumental uh, to making this happen. So round of applause for them. Thank you so much to these fabulous folks. Okay, now, We've gotten the logistics and the thank yous out of the way. I want to tell you how thrilled I am with how all of this has come together. A year ago when I was planning this, I might have said that live conferences were far superior to virtual conferences. In fact, I 100% said that many times. Um, I don't know, y'all. I, I think I've changed my tune on that. Now when I think about what virtual means, Virtual means global and inclusive. It means people can, enjoy, can join from around the world without worrying about the cost of travel or visas. Being virtual means flexible, having the opportunity to think outside the box and decide for ourselves what a conference should look like. It means good for the environment, less plane trips required. It also means comfortable. I don't know about you, but I am wearing pajama bottoms and I have been for months. <laughs> it's awesome. And now I'd like to thank you wholeheartedly for joining us here at Outlier. I hope you learned some things, meet some new people, have some amazing conversations and have an overall great time. Whew. All right, well, I look forward to seeing you all in various sessions, discussions, random chats and hell maybe some of you will even uh maybe we'll even sing some karaoke together later so see you then